Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Onesie certainly did. She had plenty of turkey, and I discovered that she is extremely slippery. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew AJT, and today we're going to make a rune crossbow from scratch without leaving Mauritania. Just kidding, I actually want to talk about real quick, Jagex made an update the other day where when you empty the ecto file to teleport, you can no longer interrupt the refilling here. So this actually caused a lot of people to think that the empty ecto file, which you see here, was now a discontinued item. However, what I learned from a comment is that if you talk to Valerina here with an ecto file that's full already in your inventory, she will actually give you an empty one. So it is not discontinued. And the funny thing was, is before I knew this, I was actually planning to do like a 5 mil GP bounty for anyone who could get me an empty ecto file. But because I know this now, there's really no point. And I'll actually just save this 5 mil for when I get 20,000 subs. And I'll do like a party room giveaway or something because I'm already going to do a boss mess or something along those lines. So I might as well save that for that day. So I have a lot of things that are worth talking about, but none of them are really warranting a 10 to 15 minute video like I usually make. So instead of making a video on one of them and really stretching it out, I'm just going to spend a few minutes on each of them in this video. So it'll be kind of like a fun variety video. I never tried this before, so let me know if you guys enjoy. It should be fun. So I want to show you guys something pretty cool that very few people actually know about. I didn't discover this or find this, but I've really found that very few people are aware that this is possible. In PvP, you can actually fight other players in Port Phasmatis while wearing a bedsheet. That is right, you can actually walk around in this thing and do PvP and there's really nothing stopping you on a PvP world. And the funny thing is, is that you can actually kind of hide what weapon you're using. So I'm using a DDS here and there's no way that this opponent here can actually tell what weapon I'm using and I can do the special attacks. So I tested out a few things with this. So for example, if you die, nothing happens for a while. You just kind of sit there and eventually you spawn in Edgeville or wherever your spawn point is. And thankfully you can actually just go pick up your bed sheet. It doesn't turn into coins or anything. So it's very nice to be able to test this. So does this work with range? Well, yes, it does. You can shoot a magic shortbow or whatever you want out of the bed sheet and they can't actually see what weapon you're using other than that arrows are coming right out of your face, which is kind of weird to think about, but this is pretty cool. The only real downside is that you can only walk while using the bed sheet, so your movement is incredibly slow. Let's try Magic Shortbow to AGS combo. He definitely won't see this one coming, and boom, 16. The animation does actually play for this one, which is interesting. I just feel like there is so much potential to this to make some sort of fan-made custom minigame with this, like the high-value target minigame I played earlier this year. There's two color bed sheets as well, so you could have like two teams and it would be chaos because nobody could tell what the other team is doing. Let me know if you have any ideas of what to do with this in a clan setting. You can test this out yourself by talking to the Ghost Innkeeper for the bed sheet during or after the Ghost's Ahoy quest. And just because I don't know when I never mention this again, you can actually see that the Staff of the Dead is actually taken right from Necrovarus. Back in the day when they used to make items in OSRS, they would typically just reuse models from other NPCs. And they don't really do this anymore because they have more tools to make graphics and more staff, obviously. But it's pretty cool that some of these items are actually from other NPCs and are being repurposed. It has a certain charm to it. I really wish we could get this guy's staff. This one is awesome. If you talk to this guy and pay him 500 Ecto tokens, you can actually get permanent free travel to Dragon Tooth Island. This is a really cool area in the game, but there's not really much going on here other than an elite clue location. However, I really think that someday there will be more content here, maybe a quest or a mini game. I'm not really sure, it's just speculation, but this is such a cool area that I don't see it being underused for too much longer. So the next thing I want to talk about is kind of a rant. This is footage from the last time I went staking, which was March 2017. And if you haven't seen this video, Never Staking Again, LE Stake, it's actually one of my favorite videos that I made in OSRS, so I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it. But the gist is that in this video, I lose nine stakes in a row. And then I stake my Elijah and I win. And I basically leave breaking even 
and I vow to never stake again. Unfortunately, not many people have had that same realization that I've had that staking is not worth it. You should never do it ever. And it's really become a toxic part of the community. And one thing that drives me insane, and it's really dumb, is there's a new thing called staking debt, where people actually become indebted as far as GP, and they will actually get loans of more GP to stake with to try to pay off that debt. Do you realize how fucking stupid that sounds? Because staking loses money on average. If you win half your stakes, which is about what you'll do, you will lose GP because you have to pay the staking tax. So staking is actually a money loss system. You might get lucky here and there, but on average, you will lose GP. So why would you borrow GP to go do something that actually loses more GP? It's so dumb. You would actually be better off loaning someone who is in debt a dragon scimitar so they can kill green dragons because green dragons are actually on average more profitable than staking because staking loses money and green dragons is almost 100% profit. And a lot of people see streamers who have made billions from staking and they say, oh, that could be me, I should go stake. Well, guess what? Most of those streamers, when they get cleaned, they get donations and they rebuild instantly. Whereas you, if you get cleaned, you're gonna have to rebuild and that could take a year. So do not stake, never stake. I get it, it can be addicting for some people. I'm not about to get into the psychology of that because I don't really know how all that works. I'm not, you know, a psychologist here. And this isn't really directed at my viewers because most of you guys who watch my videos are very intelligent and you know all this stuff already. This is more just me ranting about the stupid things I see on Twitter or Twitch of people going billions in debt and staking or getting cleaned unnecessarily when there are so many money-making methods in this game that require very little risk and yet people still choose to stake which comes with massive risk. And do I think staking should be removed? No, because then people will find other ways to gamble unfortunately. But if I was in charge, the staking tax would be going up. So there's a couple of Jagex related things I wanted to talk about. One is this guy posted a tweet exactly a year ago. He was one of the winners of the King of the Skill, which is kind of similar to the Twisted League thing going on right now. It was kind of like a little competition. And he posted Day 365, King of the Skill prize, still who knows where. Maybe after two years I'll have it, but I doubt it at this point. So this was exactly one year ago. And he posted again today, a year later, two years now since King of the Skill ended, and I still haven't received my physical reward. It can't be that difficult to put some picture in a box and drop it off at the post office. I'm sure it'll arrive any day now, right old school RuneScape. And yeah, it looks like he still hasn't gotten his reward two years later. And uh, luckily it does look like someone is maybe taking care of this. This is Mod Sween here, but this is not the first time I've heard of people having difficulty getting their rewards from Jagex, which is not really a good thing. Again, I don't know if it's really true or not. Maybe he did get it, maybe he got lost in the mail. But um, this guy, Mod Sween, is saying that the people who were distributing the prizes don't even work for Jagex anymore, so that's how long it's been. The other thing is back on October 5th, Jagex posted about some RuneFest reveals, and one of them I thought was really cool. It was a clan system update, so they actually announced that certain clan leaders would actually be invited to Jagex to help work on the clan system. And I thought this was a really cool idea. Obviously, I run the Andrew AJT62 clan chat, and I actually filled out this survey on here. And I filled this out back in early October, and it is now early December. And as far as I know, there hasn't been any update about this as to who's actually going to be invited or how is it going to work, when is it going to be. Maybe there has been an update that I haven't seen. You know, I'm not watching every Q&A or seeing every jmod tweet so maybe i missed it but i tried tweeting a jmod and i haven't gotten a response so i'd really like to have some sort of update on this as to who is actually going to be invited and when is it going to happen in 2020. so one last thing about jagex and i don't mean to pile on so much i do give credit where credit is due for example the entangle update that was super good but jagex posted a q a recently on youtube and they had something interesting in the description so look at the top line here. Update the description. This is public facing. This needs to be well optimized as the contents will be searched against when 
users navigate YouTube. Typically, we use the following text, and this is just a generic description of the Q&A. I don't mean to read too much into this because it's more of a funny thing than anything, but how could this have happened? Maybe there was a template they used and they accidentally copied the top part when they're not supposed to, or maybe there was a memo sent out saying, hey, we need to work on our descriptions, and this is like an example, but they just copied and pasted it instead of writing a new one. But either way, they didn't proofread it, which really only takes about a minute to do, and you could have noticed this part immediately. It's not the first time we've seen Jagex put something out before really checking it thoroughly, seemingly, because we've seen updates where twisted bows are on the floor or glitches are happening with brand new updates right away that really should have been found in beta testing. It's just a good example of how when you put something out there on the internet, you really want to double check it or triple check it or quadruple check it. I mean, even when I make a YouTube video, not saying that I never make mistakes, but I at least watch my videos twice before I upload them just to give myself the best chance of not leaving any errors in. I know I'm being pretty critical with Jagex in this video, but at least most of these are pretty minor things and they have done a lot of things right in 2019. If I had the opportunity to go to Jagex to work on the clan system or even just offer feedback, that would probably be the coolest thing I've ever done with a video game before. So there was something weird that happened on YouTube. I posted a community tab poll and I linked it on Twitter. And as you see here, the link works fine no problems, but multiple people started telling me that the link was taking them to a strange channel, so I tried it on mobile here, and look at this, it's the same link, but it's taking me to a channel called Post from many years ago, and this is not my channel, I don't have anything to do with this channel, and my community tab post was actually linking to this channel, so I figured out the problem, YouTube updated the link system for community tab posts recently to make them shorter, I guess, and at the top there is the old link format, and at the bottom is the new link format. The problem is they didn't realize that this contains a legacy URL looking like this, which is the old format for channel URLs, which are permanent. So youtube.com slash post is bringing some people to this old channel. And this is always the case with legacy URLs. For example, my old channel name, AndrewAJT62, that will still bring you to my channel. So I guess they need to revert the URL system back to the original one, or change it entirely. But it's funny because this channel, which has no content, actually gained a bunch of subscribers since I actually noticed this was happening. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this variety video, and if so, I'll do one every once in a while when these little things pile up that I want to talk about. And definitely hit the like button if you enjoyed, that really helps out the channel. Sorry I still don't really have my voice, I know it sounds probably different in certain clips as I record this video on different days. I got sick a few weeks ago and I lost my voice, but I feel totally better now, but it still seems to come and go. Be sure to hit that sub button if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload every Tuesday. You can join my clan chat in game, AndrewAJT62. You can follow me on Twitter down below at AndrewAJT. You can join our Discord down below. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon page in the end screen. You guys are the absolute best. I'll see you all next week.